just seems like we celebrate our history so much when it comes to art. You still won't stop talking about impressionists and a lot of the kind of work that you are able to auction as well comes from that era of art. And even in the Indian context, it's the modern masters. We're surrounded by a Souza, a Raza, a Tayyab Mehta, and they don't seem to go out of fashion. So in that sense, are we evolving in our uh, contemporary sense, the contemporary art scene? Is it able to find more favor with people looking at buying art? Certainly. I mean, the, the, the art world, and I use that carefully, not, I'm not saying the art market. The art world is about people identifying with what the artist is saying. And um, you mentioned Sousa, you mentioned Mehta, you mentioned, you could mention any artist internationally. If an artist is able to produce work with which people identify, then he attracts attention and he draws interest in. Artists who are much more particular only have a smaller following and therefore become less well-known and frankly are pr probably likely to be less higher priced. For example, last year in, in, in New York, we sold Edward Munch's The Scream yes. for $120 million. And now phenomenal. Might, that's that's the, high, the most highly priced artwork sold in history. It is, but it's not surprising to know that The Scream is the second most well-known image in the art world after the Mona Lisa. And so it, doesn't, it isn't a surprise to us that actually a number of buyers want to own The Scream to own one of the great iconic works of art in the world. And I think the same applies to any market, um, any part of the world, and no less so than here in India. Um, and the reason why um, people collect works of art, such as the, the meta that we're going to be selling um, in, in New York in March, yes. is simply because of what it, they can identify with it. I mean, this lovely, wonderful meta is a forerunner of the triptych that's in your Indian National Gallery of Modern Art here in, in, in Delhi. And uh, what it prefigures is the work and the interpretation that has gone into that masterpiece that is Indians can identify with. And so it's not surprising that um, the Amaya collection is featuring one of these great works in its sale as an indication of the way collecting is going and the popularity of collecting. Let's take a moment and talk about the Amaya collection because this obviously comes from a private collector and some of the art that she has in her repertoire right now that is coming for auction is uh, work that she's picked up from Sotheby's auction as well. I believe two of the artworks do come from Sotheby's. So to be able to say that there is a market out there for Indian art and considering this is the second evening of its kind that Sotheby's is organizing where Indian art is up for auction and not in a too long a period of time as well. Uh, do you think the art market in India is ripe enough for more of these kind of events, for more sales? Is there enough art coming out of the woodwork, if you please, to be able to be auctioned? Well, I think, that, thank you for asking the question because this highlights the importance of the Maya collection. And the other collection that you referred to is the Hurwitz collection, which we sold in 2000, was also another great hallmark collection. And just as in any culture, there are very few collectors who operate at this level. And uh, uh, Marita Javeri is, is one of the great collectors. She has an extraordinary eye. She's a second generation collector from her family. And she has assembled the most wonderful works, the surest of, of most beautiful works, and so it's only very rarely that actually we would give an Indian, uh, in any collection, not just an Indian collection, but any collection internationally, the um, privilege of an evening sale. And what that says to the world at large is, take note, this is something very special. And we're selling this collection in New York in March because we think this will bring it to a broader international audience. Undoubtedly, all the Indian collectors will pay great attention to the sale. But we anticipate that many more people from outside the Indian collecting community will also be looking at these works. As a benchmark uh, for every auction that you conduct at Sotheby's, and you talked about uh, evening kind of events of the kind that we are going to see even for an Amaya in New York, um, the benchmark seems to be $5 million. And that is a, a great benchmark if you were to ask about Indian art, because 
This is, this is entirely positioned that being able to tell the world that Indian art has arrived in more ways than one can imagine. So, in that context, are you going to see an audience full of the Indian diaspora looking at buying Indian art? Or has the profile changed, the buyers for Indian art? Well, certainly, I think that uh, one of the characteristics of our sale rooms in, in London and, and New York and Hong Kong and Paris is that they are filled with people associated with the collecting interest, the collecting country. And I have no doubt that the Indian diaspora will turn up in their hundreds to witness this great event. But what we will also see will be collectors in other categories, and particularly as we've just talked about Meta, but you could also talk about Raza and Sousa, the great Indian painters drew references from other cultures as well. And you see in, in uh, Meta, for example, re reflections of uh, Picasso, of Braque, and um, you see in, in Raza, Rothko. And you can, see, you can draw on any of these reflections because these were influenced by these people. So it's not surprising that curiosity and a connection brings other people in. So I, I think we will, this, is, this is the beginning of more and more people from outside the Indian community wanting to, to look at what's happening in the Indian market. One still flounders when one talks about Rothko, for instance, the one you mentioned, or a Picasso, where they're positioned in the art market as opposed to the best that India has to offer by way of artists and their artwork. There is a substantial difference there. So in terms of being able to value the kind of work that comes out of certain culture, uh, it'd be interesting to know from you how that process does take place. Well, it's a simple one of supply and demand. First of all, um, Picasso or Rothko um, have been in the art market and freely available to buyers and sellers and collectors for very many years. And if you take somebody like Picasso, first of all, he produced a great number of works. And secondly, he's been a popular painter, a popular artist, um, for, will soon be over 100 years, and since he's, he was born. And so there has been a great number of people who make up the people who want to own Picassos. Somebody like Picasso and Rothko, these artists, are unique because they're sort of, they become contemporary brand names. And for, for individuals who don't know much about art, one way into the art market is, and the safe way, is to acquire a work of art that they're familiar with. It's um, like a luxury brand, but in, in the art world. And for many people, that gives them great comfort. It's one of the reasons why people participate in auctions. It's because they are competing against other people in an open marketplace and they can see exactly what's going on. They can see where the underlying prices are. Whereas with the Indian market, it's still in its early days. Um, and I think over time, as more and more uh, buyers and, and, and sellers come into the market, the price for Indian works will gradually climb. But it's still at the early days compared to the great European and American artists. And do you see a lot of the work that comes up to Sotheby's also coming from private collections? Are there any other spaces that you're tapping into to be able to get the best of Indian art? Yes, I mean, I think that we look at, at, at obviously, private collections. And some dealers offer their, their works because they're also holders of, of some of this art. And we also see um, deceased estates. I think that... Um, one of the, the great movements that we've seen really since the 50s has been that the great European and American collectors, um, when the colonial period ended in Southeast Asia, a lot of these works went back to the Americas, to European countries. Generational change happens. And so the, the owners of these um, works of art are no longer as interested as the would-be collectors now back in, in Southeast Asia and here in India.